Hello class, uh, welcome to week 8's lecture, how to edit your work. So I think this is a really important concept to talk about, um, this concept of editing. Generally speaking, when people talk about editing, hmm, what are people talking about? So think about if you, you guys know the difference between editing versus post-processing. Think about it for a second. Okay. Um, I'm not 100% sure what you guys are going to say, of course, but generally, in my experience, um, most photographers out there, especially digital photographers, don't know the difference between editing and post-processing. They are not the same thing. They're actually two different, totally different uh, concepts. So generally, when we think about editing, people think that it's, oh, you know, I'm going to go home and edit my image, which means, you know, add contrast, add saturation, crop the image adjust the brightness of this and that, that is not what editing is. Editing is the act of taking all your photographs and really narrowing it down to the best crop of photographs. That's why generally for magazines they have photo editors who aren't people actually just photoshopping images but rather saying hey I like this image, I like this image, I like this image, I want to put this image here, that image there. And when you think about post-processing, it's everything you do in Photoshop, Lightroom, Picasa, anything in which you adjust the image in terms of the colors, in terms of the sharpness, in terms of the contrast. I think it's really important to differentiate editing versus post-processing because when it comes to editing, it should be the most important thing besides actually taking the photograph. Post-processing should be very, very minor. Nowadays, people spend too much time post-processing versus editing. Um, and I think that really when it comes to photography, editing your photographs should be really take 90 to 95% of your time, whereas post-processing, just adjusting black and white color here and there, it should be very straightforward and uh, relatively, uh, you know, relatively easy. So really consider when you're out taking photos, it's better to show less than show a ton because what they say less is more and especially this online age where there's just so many photographs out there and it's just kind of overwhelming to see all of it it's important to really narrow down to our best shots so for this uh, this lecture I'll show you guys a little bit about you know how I edit my images and I'll show you guys some different images my quote quote keepers versus my not keepers or almost keepers so considering a keeper as an image that you really really want to keep generally speaking if I shoot for an entire day if I get one or two keepers that I consider decent that's a good crop there's days I shoot for an entire day and I'm not gonna get any decent images and there's other days I get more keepers than others but generally when it comes to keepers there's two things that I look for the first thing is form, and the second thing, content. So when you think about form, think about the composition, think about the framing, think about the angle, the perspective, um, whether the background's not too busy. That's form. Content is what's actually going on in the photograph. What is the photo trying to say? What kind of emotions does it evoke? What does the viewer think when they're looking at the photograph? To create a really powerful image, in my opinion, should be having strong form and strong content. Of course, having strong form and strong content in the same photograph is incredibly difficult. It's one of those things that it rarely ever happens. My general suggestion is that you know, when it comes to your photos, if they're not really, everything doesn't work out completely well, rather than just kind of making excuses whether a why a photograph works or why a photograph doesn't work, at times it's best to not just show the photograph to the general public. Of course, if you want feedback and critique, you'd want to share with other people, but other than that, you know, just try to be really selective with images. So I'll, I'll show you first some of my keepers, photos that are in my portfolio, then photos that are almost keepers, photos that didn't quite make the cut, and I'll kind of uh, walk you guys through that. This is a photograph I took in Korea. Uh, it was taken when it was slightly raining, um, and what I first saw was this really interesting background and what I did was I thought that it would be a really nice backdrop and I waited 
for somebody interesting to walk into the frame. And from the corner of my eyes, this uh, this lady dressed in all white, uh, walking from the side. And the second she saw me, you know, framing the photograph and waiting for someone to step in, she looked at me, took the umbrella and slightly lowered it. The effect is that you can't see her face, but you can see how elegant and wonderful she looks in all white, and just small things like these little, uh, these little leaves on the ground from the tree and the lighting was just smack dab perfect that day and it made this very beautiful photograph There's another photograph I took I know a lot of you guys are busy but you know I think it's really important to, to make time for photography regardless of how busy you are this is when I just used to work in my old job before I decided to pursue photography full-time I was just at my lunch break and I was going up the escalator and I saw this guy walking from the corner and I thought that, hey, if I'm going up the escalator, if he, if I time this correctly, he walks right in between this these two things right here. That might make a nice photograph. And um, I waited, waited. The second he stepped into, I clicked. And while I took a photo, I immediately saw this reflection here. I'm like, oh, that might be kind of cool. And it wasn't until I actually went home and looked at the photograph that I actually got the second reflection here. And you can see that oftentimes you want get people walking, getting this nice little V is quite nice. This little foot is above the ground, also barely off the ground here. And small things that I make, I think make this photo great, this little jagged line here that goes up to his foot. I like these reflections of the feet here. Has a little bit cut off here. This one's quite nice, but I don't mind it too much. And I like the framing, it's very, it's very simple and straightforward. Another photograph that I took that, you know, really demonstrates patience when it comes to photography. I was off work and I was walking around the neighborhood and I saw this really interesting sculpture right here. And to me it almost looked like a UFO and I said to myself, hey, it looks like it's a UFO about to abduct somebody. And I saw these lights here, very lovely lights here. And the best thing was I saw this arrow here on the ground and I thought to myself, if I waited long enough, if somebody came right here, it might make a really, really nice photograph. And so I waited... I waited and I waited. I nearly waited around 30 minutes for this shot and nobody came because, you know, in LA nobody walks. But I waited long enough and I was about to leave from the corner of my eye. Suddenly I saw a guy riding his bike and I said, oh my gosh, this might be perfect. And I was just waiting, waiting. And the drama was that a lot of cars were coming in and out of the frame right here. And I was just, you know, keeping my fingers crossed saying, oh, I wish the cars are out of the frame once I take the photograph. And the car comes, pass, and the second he gets in front of that little arrow, I clicked and I made the photograph. Um, you know, once again, patience is key. One of the things, once again, I love about street photography is you don't need a particularly fancy camera to make a powerful image. This is a photograph that I took. I was actually at the World Press Photo of the Year in Switzerland uh, last year, and you're actually not allowed to take photographs inside, but at my little small point and shoot. And I saw this face, you know, Julian Assange right here. And from behind this behind the, the picture, there's actually another picture printed on the back of that. And so I suppose this person here was looking at the other photograph behind. And I saw to myself, I'm like, hey, you know, this might make a very interesting surrealistic image. And I waited and I looked to my left and I said, I saw this photo of uh, Kim Jong il. And I thought to myself, hey, you know, if I just capture this image, it might be an interesting image, but what if I got two pairs of legs under here? That might make a really great image. And I just waited for maybe around five minutes, and it just happened to be lucky that this person walked here. I took a few photos. Then this person back here crossed their legs, and I took a photo, and I think that's what really made the shot. Uh, the reason being is that oftentimes, you know, People crossing the legs here, it kind of shows that they're a little bit uncertain. And I see this photo of Kim Jong-il. Actually, that original photo, he's looking at um, his younger son, looking quite concerned. And I thought it made a really nice uh, contrast and juxtaposition. How long do you think I waited for this photograph? It's a photograph I actually didn't, I only waited for about five seconds. I was in London at that same Pancras station. I looked at the writing on the ground and I thought to myself, hey, that'd be wonderful if, um, you know, or actually, no, no, let me take, 
take a step back. So I was at the station, I saw the statue, I'm like, that's a cool statue, I was just reading the text. And then suddenly I just saw a woman walk by with high heels, and I just instinctively uh, took a photograph. And once again, it wasn't until I got home that I noticed that her elbow here and his elbow here actually mirrored that of one another. It's pure luck, but sometimes that's why it's important when you're out shooting. To just shoot with instinct sometimes. Sometimes you don't want to think too much, because if you think too much about a scene, a lot of the times you end up not taking the photograph. One of my one of my favorite photographs, it's I was walking across the street, saw this lovely lady with this hat and these two earrings here. And I saw her walking and I crouched down, I was about to take the photograph, and she just kind of took out her hands like here. She's essentially posed for me. Why I think makes the photo great is I love this flare. I actually shot this with a flash, which kind of gave some fill light here. I love how her earrings are mismatched, this expression in her face, and once again, the hands are just so crucial. I love these two people walking here, just side by side. It almost looks like her posse. Something that might, I think, is a little bit distracting is this little thing here, sticking out her hat, but I don't mind too much. And, you know, it's, it feels very LA, it feels very Hollywood, all these things in the background. Another photograph that I think is important to illustrate the fact that you don't want to quote quote chimp when you're shooting street photography. Essentially what chimping is is if you're on the streets taking photographs, after you take a photograph, do not always be looking at your LCD screen to check if you got the shot or not because if you always do that, then you're going to miss other great photo opportunities. Um, this photograph, for example, I was shooting with my friend and he said to me, while I was I, before I took this photo, I took another photograph. I was looking at my LCD screen, and he, he yelled to me, Eric, look at that guy. I'm like, huh? And I instinctively took a photograph. And it ended up being one of my favorite photographs. Had I not had my friend with there, me with there, who pointed this out, I wouldn't have taken the photograph because my eyes were so embedded in the LCD screen. And I look at this photograph. Um, you know, This guy's wearing this really shiny, sh shiny suit. I took this photo with a flash. And... I like it. He's kind of a cool looking guy, kind of like a, a mobster looking fella. And the mini store in this photograph is, you know, I wonder what's in the bag. <laughs> you know, I've asked people, they thought, you know, money, they thought, you know, weapons, some people thought dirty laundry, some people thought body parts. <laughs> and I actually quite like this other guy here in the background coming up his shoulder with his uh, sunglasses. Um, kind of a very mysterious photograph. Another photograph I took in downtown LA. It's a photograph that I very much like because it's a photograph that I think has a strong social message and a strong social critique is that you have this one this one African American woman, really, really big and overweight, with this tiny popsicle stick, and she's looking at me, you know, not very pleased. Um, to me this is less about just kind of poking fun at her that, you know, she's obviously very overweight. But to me, this is, you know, a critique about American society, the consumerism, you know, the fact that oftentimes people from lower social and economic backgrounds who are more overweight because healthy food is expensive. And so, you know, looking at this photograph, you also see here in the background, there's another lady who just happens to have a popsicle stick, just pure luck, um, also quite overweight. And I think that this arm here is perfectly frames it. Um, a photo that I think works far better in color than black and white because it's able to pick up this little green uh, popsicle stick uh, juxtaposed against her uh, black shirt. Another photograph that I took, um, this man was walking, he was blowing his nose and I got a photo and I just love getting the action of him blowing his nose, seeing that look in his eyes, he's got a very very strong look in his eyes. Um, and small things like the McDonald's sign in the background and all these other things here just I think just make a very powerful photograph. Now I'll show you guys some of my quote quote almost keepers so these are the photographs which I think that almost made the cut but didn't and I'll kind of walk you guys through why I didn't think the photos were as effective. A photograph that I saw in Detroit the reason I like the photograph is I like the the way the photo is framed is that 
I really like the dark shadowy background, the little silhouettes, the, the skyline, the background, this right here. The streets are relatively empty and clean. I didn't ask for permission when I took this photo. Go ahead. He looked straight at me. He had this funny look on his face, and it says Navy. The reason why I didn't keep the photograph is that, you know, although the framing and everything's good, I think the photograph didn't have enough context. I mean, he's wearing a Navy hat, but that doesn't really connect to the scene at all. Maybe if his hat said Detroit or something like that, I think it'd get, be given more con context. So, I would say that the framing, um, the form of this photo was quite good. I like where his place in the frame but the content is what kind of is lacking is that you could have taken this anywhere in the world uh, in some downtown area but it doesn't have enough context a photograph that I really wanted to like just because of the, the story behind the photograph uh, I was walking in downtown LA and I saw this uh, you know transsexual male or cross gender is very 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 tall like around seven feet tall and I saw you know she, she was just wearing these high heel boots and looks almost like Minnie Mouse and when I took the photograph you know I was really afraid of how this uh, person was going to react and after taking the photo I she looked kind of looked at me and I said oh you know um, you look very lovely and then a very deep voice, she said, thank you. <laughs> so um, the reason I didn't like the photograph is that just the noise and this is just, to me, it just, it's just way too distracting. But it's just really, uh, colors look really nasty. I kind of like this arrow pointing at her. I kind of like these things right here. I got the hands. Uh, interesting subject, but just the, the colors of the photo just really look really nasty to me. And I think that I was more interested in the experience and the story behind the photograph than the photograph itself. Another photo I took in Chicago, kind of like the glazed look in her face and her her dilated eyes. The reason I didn't like end up taking the photograph is that I think this guy doesn't really add to the photograph. She's really fascinating to me, but this guy doesn't do anything for me. Photo I took in India, I kind of like these spikes and this barb, you know, chain right here. And I kind of like his hand here, just hand here looking at. But I think that his not perhaps the right subject to have in here. If I had a maybe a punk rock guy or a guy look who looks pretty tough, it would have been a better photograph. A photograph that I took of a dog in India. You know, it's a stray dog. You know, it looks very rugged. I quite like these patterns on the ground. But what I think doesn't make the photograph is the lighting is actually quite flat, um, very dull. I wish the dog was perhaps looking up at me um, when I took the photograph. Another photograph I took in LA that was interesting is that, you know, small things like he has two canes. Um, you know, I kind of like his glasses, his beard, the background. Background's quite simple. I think it's almost a little too simple and he's interesting but not interesting enough. I feel like, once again, a photo that doesn't have enough context. Um, I don't, you know, I think the viewer looks at it and might have a difficult time, you know, why did I take the photograph, why, what kind of message am I taking to the photo, I'm trying to say to the photograph, uh, I don't think it really, I don't think it really works. A photo that I took, I think I was too close when I took the photo, I, I quite like this, uh, this embrace right here, I kind of like this blur here, but, and she's quite interesting, and this lady here, but, I got too close, and so, kind of chopped off the top of their heads. I wish that there might have been a little bit more room above their heads, a little bit more room on the right. So I think kind of the, you know, she's just quite old and she's kind of holding on to this person right here. I kind of like that emotional aspect to it, but I think that the form of this photo, the, the framing, the composition wasn't quite there. Whenever I see ladies with hats and sunglasses, I just can't resist myself. I have to take a photograph. Um, I took this photograph. I I quite like it how she's framed in between here. Um, I like the pattern on her shirt. I love the the things on her hat. I like the curls and stuff. But I think I took this photo half a second too late or half a second too early. I wish she was looking directly at me. I think it would have created more interest. A photo that I took of a man in the crosswalk. I love this intense look in his face, his sunglasses, his watch. But what 
the small thing that really killed it for me is I wish there was just a little bit more room above his head and a little bit more room on the side of the frame so I could actually see he was on his cell phone and I actually quite like this dark figure looking at me but um, a photograph that wasn't quite there photograph that I took in Korea it was this little mascot here that looked quite sad and this person walked by actually patted the head saying oh you know it's okay or something and I quite am interested in this lady looking at but I feel like the f it doesn't have enough context once again is that I quite like this interaction exchange but she doesn't add to the photo at all although I think she's interesting and these people walking back here are actually a little distracting for me uh, what I tried to get was the hands in the photo, the hands here, the fingers here, but I w just wish I could see the, the hands here. I think it would have made a good photograph. Quite like this guy, he looks very cool. Uh, look his watch, his shoes, his outfit. Cut him out on the right side of the frame. To me, I think it just killed the photograph. A photo I took at a mall. I shot this in Singapore. Uh, I shot this with film. Love this look here, this eyes, I love this kind of interaction, they're looking at the phone, but maybe if I could just see one eye mimicking it, it would have been much more interesting, or if both of them were looking at me. And that's it, so really consider when you're out, you know, editing your photos, to really, really choose your best images, and don't just settle for so-so images, less is more. My suggestion is you know, when you're out shooting, kind of think, uh, I mean, when you're at back at home looking at your photographs, remember, form versus content, strong composition, strong framing, strong perspective, try not to get anything distracting in the background, but at the same time, strong story, strong emotion, strong context is what makes really uh, important images. So these two things, form and content. Yeah, so hope you guys enjoyed the lecture. See you guys soon.